Hello, everybody. Come on over here, Maya. Good morning and happy, happy Mother's Day, Grandma's Day, Mothers of Dogs Day, Godmother's Day. It's a great day to be alive. Welcome to Festivant Yoga. It's an interactive yoga class. And with that said, I want you, the viewer, to ask me any questions. Um, I will go over a few things, perhaps that will spark some interest. And I will try to answer whatever you ask. Let me know that you're there. Um, because all I see is a screen. So there we go. We're going to begin today on our backs. So we're just going to lie on our backs. Oh, and we're inside because it's too darn cold to be out. All right, why are you going to sit? No, we're going to leave. All right, so we're on our backs. Knees are bent. We want to keep our knees bent because that releases the lower back. So I want you to try it with length and legs and notice how our lumbar spine lifts up unless we press down with our belly button towards our spine. So it's always good to allow the QL, so it's quadratus lumbarum, these two muscles of the lower back to relax by bending our knees. Our feet are wide apart so that our knees can touch. Our palms face the ceiling. This gives us an external rotation of the shoulders. And we're just going to close our eyes and breathe. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose, I'm going to allow the abdomen to rise and fall with each breath. The breath. This is where we bring air into our lungs through our nose. And we want to do it through our nose because the hairs in our nose, the mucus, takes out all of the impurities, or at least most of the impurities. As the air travels into our sinus cavity, it is warmed and humidified. So when it enters our lungs, it's the best, cleanest, perfect air to enter our lungs. At this point, oxygen is sent to every cell of the body. Now, if we were to spread our lungs out, they would take the area of a tennis court. So just think about that area as you inhale and exhale. So what we're breathing is about 78% nitrogen and about, what, almost 20% oxygen, 19%. 1% is other. So we don't need a lot of oxygen. It's that Goldilocks number, just the right amount. Let's bring our knees to our chest. You're going to feel the entire back grounded. Let's hug our knees and rock from side to side. So this is our time for a nice back massage. Going to come to center. Let's release those feet back to the ground. Let's open up our arms, forming that letter T. Now let's just bring our knees away from our device. 
turning our head towards the device as we are watching our yoga class. So that's how I'm going to cue. I'm going to cue closest and furthest away. Spinal twists. You notice our spine is twisting, our head is in one direction, our knees are at the other. These are good for our nervous system. Our, our brain stem goes down and then all down our spine are all of our nerves that travel throughout the body. So we're separating vertebra and at the same time it's also good for our digestion. Bring our head back to center, knees come back to center. Now, let's turn away from our device and bring our knees towards our device. Spinal twist of the other side. Don't forget your full yoga breath. Inhale and exhale through our nose. Two more yoga breaths here. Let's bring our head back to center, knees come back to center. Let's hug our knees and let's rock again from side to side. Let's come to center. Now let's allow our knees to splay out. Flat feet are together. Let's hold on to our feet. Now, if you cannot hold on to your feet, and this is where straps come in. Straps are really good. Place them around your feet and bring them towards you. See, we are having people join saying good morning, good morning. Happy baby pose opens up our hip flexors. If you don't have a strap, you can use your hands. Now let's release flat feet on the ground, heels close to our buttocks. Knees are hip width apart, so I want you to find your hip bone, it's protruding from the front. Draw a line, and that parallel line, that's going to be our thighs and our knees, and our feet. So all of our joints are aligned. Alignment is important, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Arms are by our sides. Let's press belly button to spine, feel your lumbar spine grounding. Now, what I want you to do is I just want you to lift your tailbone, so tuck the buttocks, tighten the buttocks, but keep the lumbar spine grounded. It's a very slight movement. All we're doing is shifting the pelvis forward. So lumbar spine is grounded. Now, let's lift our lumbar. Just keep your middle back grounded. So if you were wearing a bra, your bra strap would be grounded. So the lift is not too much. We've lifted lumbar, lower back. we lifted our tailbone. Now we're going to lift our thoracic spine. So slowly we lift up higher. And notice our knees are still parallel. And they're aligned with our hip bone. We tend to open up our knees because that makes it easier on our biggest muscles. Let's lift up, let's walk shoulder blades inward, let's interlace fingers together. We're in a very nice high bridge. I want you to notice your abdomen rising and falling with each breath. Feel the rib cage expand.
Let's release our fingers. Let's release our shoulders. And now let's just release our upper back down to that bra strap, the rasic spine. So we're keeping the lumbar lifted. Okay, you can even bring your hands underneath. Feel the lumbar spine lifted. Now here's the deal. We're just going to lower the lumbar spine, but keep that pelvis up. So let's lower the lumbar, keep the tailbone up. You should be feeling those leg muscles, buttocks muscles. And now we're just going to release the pelvis as the tailbone really releases to the ground. Good job. Hug your knees, rocking from side to side. So we're isolating leg and buttocks muscles from our torso by shifting the pelvis. We're going to talk about that pelvis again. All right, let's come back to center. Let's prepare for our second bridge. Again, we're going to just lift the tailbone, keep that lumbar grounded. Feel your lumbar spine, your lower back grounded. Tailbone lifting, palms open to the ceiling. Let's lift our lumbar, feel those muscles engage. Let's lift thoracic all the way up. We feel our body weight distributed between our shoulders and our feet. Let's interlace fingers, walking shoulder blades inward. Remember, knees in line with the hip bone. Full yoga breath. Let's release our arms, let's release our shoulders and slowly releasing upper body, thoracic. Let's release our lumbar, keep that tailbone lifted, and we release the tailbone. Hugging knees, rocking from side to side. Good job. Let's come to center. Let's bring our knees right above our hips. We tend to bring them too close because that's easier. It's going to be a little harder because more muscles need to be used, especially in our abdomen, our, our core muscles, rectus abdominalis. So just think of like a girdle wrapped around your abdomen. Knees in line with hips, arms open up to form that letter T. We're going to release our knees away from our device and just hover them. We're going to hold here, pressing belly button to spine. This is how you protect your lower back muscles. Let's lift again. And let's release them towards our device. This is an active spinal twist. We're going to inhale to center. Exhale to one side. Just hover those legs. Inhale to center, exhale to the other side. And keep those knees aligned with the hips. We're making our femurs making a vertical line. One more on each side. And we come back to center and we hug. Notice all our muscles release. This is called wind relieving pose. And we are pressing against our abdomen, pressing against our digestive tract. It's also a very good pose because we're not 
amount of stress in the digestive tract, we're pressing against our kidneys, and then our kidneys wear little hats. Those are our adrenal glands. We're squeezing them out. Okay, from here, let's bring our feet on the ground. Now what we want to do is we're going to bring our hands underneath us, and we're going to point our fingers towards our feet. Again, feet are hip-width apart. We're going to lift to our crab pose. So we lift to our crab, pushing our pelvis up. Now, the head, we can keep looking at our thighs, or we can release our head back. If you have shoulder trouble, do not do this pose. I'd rather you just stay seated with a lengthened spine. Okay, releasing from this crab, we bring tailbone to the ground, and we lift our legs and we find our boat. So here in our boat, we want to make the letter V with our femur and our torso. Arms are forward, relax those shoulders. Full yoga breath. Let's release, feet on the ground. Let's allow the knees to splay out, feet are together. Let's lift our arms up. Our heels are far from our groin, and we bring our torso and arms forward into starfish pose. Lifting from our starfish pose, let's release our arms. Let's find our boat. Now, our boat can be hands behind us, arms in front by our sides. We can also lengthen legs and lengthen arms. But what we're doing is we're keeping that letter V. Okay? If we are fighting our boat, we're not keeping everything aligned. Find our second starfish, lifting arms up. Now remember, feet are far from the groin as we come forward. If your heels are close to your torso, we're lengthening the inner thighs. Right here, we're lengthening those very long side muscles. The TFL and the satoris muscle. And let's lift up. Let's release our arms by our sides. What we're going to do now is we're going to bend our device knee and we're going to allow it to flop out. Toes are pointing straight up. Our torso turns over that lengthened leg. We lift our arms up. And we exhale head to knee pose. So now we're feeling a stretch in the back of that leg. We lengthen leg. Let's lift our arms up. Releasing arms by our side. Now what we're going to do that length and leg, we're going to bend the knee, but we're going to bring the foot away from us. So now we're going to bring both hands towards that device thigh. We're going to walk them behind. So this is our mermaid twist. And you can control the twist by how far you walk the hand. release from this twist. Let's lengthen our device leg 
and we bring our other knee in. Let's release that knee, lifting arms up, we inhale. Exhaling, head to knee pose. Lift our arms up, releasing our arms. Let's bend that device leg, bringing that foot behind us. Let's walk our hands to the other side. We're in our mermaid twist. From here, let's release and find our tabletop. So now we're on all fours. Knees directly beneath hips, the center of our hands, where our fingers meet our palm. That's the center. That's right underneath our shoulders. So there's no pressure on our wrists. Let's inhale, pal. And notice the shifting of the pelvis. The pelvis is pushing back like QLs are tightening to bring that buttocks up. Okay? In cow, in our cat pose, we curve inward, lengthening our spine. Our QLs are not engaged now. We're engaging our core body. Let's inhale, cow. And exhale, cow. Cow cat flow. Let's find our cat and stay in cat. Now we're going to come into our sunbird flow. So now let's bring our right knee to forehead. Let's find our cat and push our right, our right heel up to the ceiling. Exhaling, bringing knee to forehead. Inhaling, sunbird. Two more. Good. Releasing to tabletop. Let's release to child's pose. Sitting on our heels, bringing our arms behind us, releasing forehead on the mat. Child's pose is a resting pose. Good place to come when we're fatigued. Okay, let's come back to tabletop. Let's find our cow. Let's find our cat. And now let's bring left knee to forehead. And let's inhale in cow with our sunburn. Exhaling and inhale. Two more. Last one. And we release. Good job, everybody. Now let's going to drop our elbows where our hands are. We're in an inclined tabletop. Okay, so from here we're going to work our tiger pose. Let's lengthen right leg, left arm. 
Keep looking down at the ground. Make sure that the leg is in line with the spine. We can either point our toes or flex the, our feet. Let's release. Let's find tiger on the other side. Can you find tiger? It's a modification to release a lot of the pressure from our wrists from being on all fours. And let's release. Let's now interlace fingers together. Let's tuck toes under. Let's lift our knees off the mat, pushing heels towards the ground. We're in our dolphin pose. So we feel a deep stretch of our calves now. Pushing chest towards thighs. And let's release. Let's extend our child's pose. Arms forward, pushing tailbone to heels. From here, we're going to bring our leg furthest away from our device forward into a kneeling lunge. We're going to lift our toes up and we're going to make sure that our torso stays ground, stays next to our thigh. And we're going to bring our tailbone to that heel as far as we can. It's like a runner stretch, stretching that front leg. Come back to that kneeling lunge and notice the knee is protected. It's either right in line with the heel or it's behind the heel. We never want to have that knee in front of the heel. Okay, from here, we're going to keep that pelvis forward. We're going to lift our torso up, lifting our arms up and back. So we're in a kneeling crescent mood. Let's release both arms forward. Back to that kneeling lunge. And let's step back to extend a child's pose. Device leg forward, kneeling lunge. Okay, keep that chest against that thigh. And we're going to sit back as far as we can, keeping our torso against the thigh. As we turn to that kneeling lunge, push that pelvis down. So notice our, our femur is at the same angle as our spine, and the front knee is protected by the heel. Okay, we're going to find our kneeling crescent moon. Keep that pelvis down, lifting up the torso, lifting up our arms, looking up and back.
to release both hands on the mat back to that kneeling lunge and now let's step back to extend the child's pose a resting pose let's lengthen our arms slaying our fingers out wide make sure that your hands are shoulder width apart let's tuck our toes under Let's lift our legs off the mat and let's just find our full plank. From your planks is where you find your downward facing dog. So now let's just shift body weight to down dog. So it's a shift of body weight, that's all it is. Inhaling plank, exhaling down dog. Your spine is not moving, it is neutral. It's just hips, shoulders, ankles, hands. Shifting forward, inhaling, shifting back to down dog, exhaling. Stay in downward facing dog. We're going to bring our back leg, the one furthest away from our device, forward into a full lunge. Now we can try our full crescent move. Keep it that knee bent, protecting, pushing pelvis down, lifting arms up, looking up and back. Releasing to full lunge, to downward facing dog. Now let's bring the other leg forward into our lunge. Full lunge, push pelvis down, looking forward. Make sure that the knee is protected. We never want to do this. Now let's lift, keep pushing pelvis down, arms up and back. Full crescent moon. Back to lunge. Downward facing up. Full plank. We're going to do side plank towards our device. So we turn to the side and just lift our arm up. Back to plank. Side plank towards the other side. Back to plank. Now let's drop our elbows where our hands, where our hands are into our stick. Side stick towards our device. 
Notice everything is still aligned. Back to step. Side stick towards the other side. Back to stick. Back to plank. Downward facing dog. Let's walk our feet towards our hands and our hands towards our feet. Forward fold. Let's cup our elbows. bring our hands to our shins. Let's lengthen our torso. We're in monkey. And come into our airplane pose. So we're going to bring our arms by our sides, palms face down. We're going to lift our torso so it is parallel to the ground. Our torso is horizontal, our legs are vertical. We're looking down and we're pushing our torso forward so that our toes are grasping the mat so we don't fall forward. Keep looking down at the ground, that keeps the cervical spine neutral. We're going to come into our chair, so let's bend our knees, swing our arms forward. Now what I want you to notice is the pelvis. Do not push the pelvis back in this chair, but rather bring it forward, kind of like a cat pose. And this way you're going to feel your thigh muscles. Lift to a back bend. Bring your palms to heart center. We're in our mountain pose. Okay, from here we're going to come into our pyramid pose. So what we're going to do is make sure that all toes are facing the same direction. And let's just bring one leg forward, but not very far forward. Okay? And that front knee is bent, so everything is facing forward. Let me, so we're looking this way, but the knee is bent. So front knee bent. Now, let's lift our arms up. Let's release chest against that front thigh. Now, if your chest can't reach the thigh, bring that back leg back more. The further your pyramid, the easier it is. The less of a stretch. You should be feeling the stretch on that front leg. We're going to come to a chest expansion here, so we're going to challenge our balance. Let's lift our hands off the mat, interlacing fingers together, squeezing shoulder blades. Keep the head down, keep looking at that front knee. Let's 
to reach our arms. Let's lift up to the ceiling. Let's release to mountain. Time. We're going to find pyramid on the other side now. So let's bring that other leg forward. Make sure that knee is bent. All the toes face the same direction. Lift the arms up. And exhaling to pyramid. It's up to you if you want a chest expansion or not. Twenty muscles on each foot, getting strong, especially doing this on carpeted floors. Lots of cushioning underneath us. Let's release our arms. Let's lift our arms up with our torso. And let's find our mountain pose. Good, shaking it out. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lengthen our IT band. So your IT band is your iliotibial band. It's a very superficial fascia that travels from the hip, your iliac, then to your tibia. So if you ever have pain at the side of your hip to the side of your knee, that's probably your IT band. If the pain goes all the way down to your heel, it's probably sciatica. And there's many causes for this. So what we're going to do is let's cross one foot over the other. Okay, all ten toes face the same direction. We're going to bend down. And we're going to walk towards one side. So we're going to, if your, let's say, if your right foot has crossed over your left, you're going to walk your hands to the right side. If your left foot is over your right, then you walk your hands to the left side. You should feel a deep stretch of the TFL muscle. Let's release crossing of the feet. Now let's cross them in the other direction. And walk your hands to the other side. So again, if you're crossing, if your right foot is in front, walk your hands to the right. If your left leg is in front, walk your hands to your left. This is where blocks come in really handy for those that can't quite reach the ground because you do want to put pressure on your hands to release the torso in its way. Good. From here, let's release. Let's find ourselves seated on the mat. Lengthen our legs forward. Staff pose, creating the letter L. Stacking everything up. Stacking our neck with the rest of our spine. Toes facing the ceiling. Let's lift both arms up. Inhaling and exhaling. Seated forward fold. Slowly, let's unroll our spine as we lift up and then begin to roll it back. So we're going to 
feel the shifting of our tailbone, our lumbar spine releases, thoracic, and lastly, our head and neck. Bring knees to chest. Let's cross right leg over left thigh. Okay, so in here, what we've done is we've created a triangle between our thighs. So let's insert that right hand in that triangle and reach for the left hand, either behind the left thigh or above the left shin. This is our lion half lotus. A deep stretch of that right buttocks, the piriformis muscle. So the piriformis muscle tightens up when we are seated. So think of that. If you sit a lot, that piriformis, piriformis deep gluteal muscle, it's really tight. And one thing that happens when it's really tight and gets knots it presses against our sciatica nerve. So it could be that sciatica pain could be caused by a tight piriformis. Like I said, there's many causes for the pain, but one of them could be a tight piriformis. Keep your arms close to your torso so you're using your biceps to bring that leg in rather than opening up and then you're using your shoulders. Okay, now that we're gonna release, let's cross left over right. Let's insert left hand in that triangle between our thighs and find our lion half lotus on this side. And again, for yoga breaths, Let's release, both feet on the ground, arms by our sides, palms face up. Let's release one leg and then the other. Notice how that feels in your lower back. Does your abdomen rise and fall with each breath? And notice your body. How does it feel? Because that is yoga, the union of mind, body, and spirit. Keep bringing that thinking mind to the stretched body part, sending our breath there. Take a deep breath in and exhale fully. Slowly let's turn to our fetal pose before we come to our easy seated pose. Find ourselves in our seated pose. Let's bring our arms up to the ceiling. Palms come to heart center. And 
thank you for joining us at our stay at home series. Trying to do what we can to bring us together. Remember to donate if you wish. And I'm hoping to see your smiling faces outside soon. Namaste. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Now that I have my glasses and I can read, who is on? Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Kurt. Good morning, Patsy. And Kara, thank you. Have a great day, everybody.